You're Steve Tech, and this is part three of our rocker arm video. And so, what we're going to show you today is we are we all, we already went over the rocker arm styles, a stud mount, uh, pedestal mount, like what a, a stock LS is, and then individual stands with a shaft mount, and then the one piece stand. Then we went over rocker arm types and where we use those rocker arm types. Always remember the uh, steel rocker exhaust pressure always has the most pressure, is always the hardest on parts. You break an exhaust rocker, actually usually does the most damage to the intake side, usually blows up the intake wheel on the lifter, on the intake of that same port that you just uh, broke the exhaust on. And now we're going to go, so that's why we like to use steel, and we use steel uh, on intake and exhaust if possible. Um, but we'd really like to use steel on the exhausts. Um, so now we're gonna cover geometry, and so I'm using the, uh, this big hemi head here because it's really easy to see. So I hope that you can see exactly what we're all talking about here. Now, this rock arm, and this is a brand new combination, so uh, actually, I'm just into the mock-up stage on this exact uh, piece, and as you can see here, it's just slightly off. Um, not super bad, but just slightly off. Uh, so what we'd like to see is everything all bolted down. Now, your uh, rocker arm tip point to shaft on any type of shaft rocker is fixed. So the only way you change geometry really is to raise or lower the pivot point, that fulcrum point. Now what you see here is that this roller tip is just slightly more than center over there. Now as we, let me move this valve out of the way and I'll show you. As you're looking at the rocker arm, now you see this pivot, as it goes through its motion. It has a, it's a circular motion because this is the pivot. So this is actually a circle that it moves. All right, it's just a circular motion. And what you're gonna want to aim for is there are some setting fixtures, there are some checking fixtures, um, but in all reality, doing it uh, manually and visually looking at it and marking it is still gonna be the best way of doing this. So I see here that if I follow my motion, that rocker arm tip, the roller tip, is probably about 50, if you look at the center line of the shaft, center line of that shaft right there, to the center line of the valve, it's just slightly forward of it. As I go through the motion, it pretty much just goes back. So, it's, so it starts over here and then goes that direction. What that's showing us is that actually this rocker arm is the pivot point is a little too high or is quite a bit too high. So what I would have liked to see him do and I can probably still adjust this valve train height by lowering the stand some which lowers my fulcrum point. That is going to allow the rocker arm to kind of start up here where it would start on let's say this side of center. It comes across, goes over the, this side of center, and then as it is midpoint, it's right here. And as it is at full wide open lift, it goes back over this direction. So we're trying to get minimum amount of movement on the valve tip itself. In order to do that, it would start like this side of center, go to here at mid lift, and then go right back to that same spot at peak lift. And we'd like it to be as close to the center line of the valve as possible. Now in these type rocker arms, something that has a shaft mount, like I said, the only way you're gonna be able to correct that geometry is by raising or lowering the stand. The push rod side of the rocker has a little bit of effect on it, very minimal, but it does have a little bit, and I'll cover that in just a second. But if your rocker arm has a nice sweep Perfect sweep has minimum amount of movement on the valve this direction, has minimum amount here, but it is 
pretty far off the center, there's nothing you can do about it. The only thing you could do is move the stand backwards or forward to try getting the tip in the center then. Because if this point here, which is fixed, to this point here is fixed, and the geometry, the sweep is correct, as long, if that sweep is correct, but it's still in the wrong spot, the only way you can do it is by moving the rocker arm forward or backward or shortening the rocker arm in that area. Shortening the rocker arm obviously is a quite a bit bigger deal than trying to move the stand. So a lot of times this kind of great big one piece stand is really hard to move, especially in a Hemi because you're gonna move the intake rocker backwards, but that moves the exhaust rocker forward. So I mean there's a, uh, because the valves are opposed, so it's not like you can move both of them back and forward. Uh, if one moves forward, one moves backward, and then moves like that. So it makes it very tough to, to actually move the rocker arm stand. Now, so that's what we want to see in the sweep. That's the most important part, is how that thing sweeps on the valve. If it's too long, you're going to have to move the rocker arm stand back or forward or get a different length rocker arm. Now, we don't want to be pushing like on the very edge of the valve here. We want to be pushing in the middle. Obviously, you're pushing out here. It's going to have the tendency to deflect the valve. And this is a, so this is like, you know, $150 valve. Now watch, I'm not sure you can see it. You can actually see me pushing. I'm, I'm just pushing with my thumb and you can see the valve stem bending. Just imagine what this thing is doing when this thing is running at uh, 8,000, 9,000 RPM opening up spring pressure on it. That valve really moves, just like a tree swaying in the wind. It's going like this. Okay, that's why we want everything stable. That's why we want that rocker arm uh, roller tip in the center of the valve. You get off too far to the edge, it's very possible that not only is it deflecting it, it can come off and get the valve stem stuck on the other side of the wheel. I mean, anything's possible with a really bad geometry. So, if we go over here to our rocker arm uh, push rod side. Let me get the light over here just a little bit better. Now we get over to our rocker arm push rod side. Now this you can see is uh, typically the companies set these up so that the there's usually one thread or flush on where the adjuster comes up through the nut. That's typically how they have the rocker arm engineered because this uh, adjuster is on a slight angle most of the time. And it does slightly affect, because of where the ball location is, affects all of your pivot points. So pivot, so point one, two, three, all affects on how the rocker arm moves. Now out here it's pretty minimal, but we always want to see your push rod lengths made after you've done your sweep, after all this geometry is correct, then you go after your push rod. Don't do your push rod first. Always do this portion first of setting up your stand height, of making sure that your valve tip height is correct. <coughs> Excuse me. Then you would, after the last thing, then you go in and you do your push rod height to make sure that it is appropriate for where they have the adjuster set up. Now, real quick thing I always go through if I see somebody else's engine or I see valve covers off on somebody's engine, I look at it and I go, oh look, at uh, that rocker arm is set up right. They did the proper geometry. They probably measured that all up. But I'll look at this one behind it, if you can see that. You see how tall that nut is up there? That nut is way up high. Let me take the camera off the tripod here. So you can see that nut and adjuster pretty much it's probably a little bit low like I said I usually put them at one thread up that's kind of common this rocker if you ever seen that rocker you'd be going holy cow somebody that thing's way up high or sometimes you'll see this thing and they're way down low or you'll see them bouncing all over the place and consistent that just means somebody didn't do their due diligence of setting up the valve train right and then setting up their push rod lengths all same so that it's all the same position in the push rod uh, or I'm sorry in the adjuster height right here based off of that nut like I said normally you're going to be one thread up so 
that is the proper way of setting up your valve train. So you need to get your, you change this fulcrum point up or down to make the appropriate sweep on the valve tip. Minimum amount of sweep possible. Normally what you're gonna see is think of it as a circular motion. So it starts up here, then it goes at mid lift, it's the farthest forward, and then at peak lift, it comes back around to that same spot that it started. So it starts here, goes forward, ends there. Goes back, forward, ends at the beginning. That's a minimum amount of sweep and that's a proper sweep. So if it does like what this one is where it just starts at the farthest point forward and then just comes down, that's not the ideal setting for valve train uh, sweep in that rocker arm. So it's a little bit of a different setup and that's all stuff that we do as building engines and, and uh, you know it doesn't matter who designed or engineered it, we still have to go through and make sure that things are right and that there's not any changes that we have to do. That's what you're going to have to do if you're ever going to be uh, assembling or doing anything like this. Uh, you have to check everything and everything needs to be adjustable, removable. So that is it on uh, rocker arms. If you guys have any questions, email me. I am, that is part of the process here. Uh, you guys are, are you know, subscribe to my tech channel and I am more than happy to help you guys out if you need any further information, you got any further questions. So we'll be moving on to, uh, I think we're gonna go through uh, belt drives, uh, all the, all the dry, camshaft drive stuff before we do the camshaft because like I said I'm procrastinating about doing the camshaft tech because camshaft tech is so hard. Anyways, I'm Steve Morris, Steve Tech, have a great day.